Hey, good morning. Uh, happy <coughs> Sunday morning. Yeah, uh, I have some, um, we're experiencing some roadblock. Uh, hopefully I can find this formula, the summation formula for this combination of uh, geometric series and arithmetic series. Oh uh, boy. Uh, hybrid series uh. Yeah, looking at my calculus book <coughs> to see um if there is anything to put in. Um Okay, so this textbook has one for geometric series, uh, formula for geometric series. What else does it have? <sighs> Boy. Mm -mm. <coughs> we may have to solve this ourselves or <coughs> or uh, we find it in the internet or somewhere because uh, um, I'm sorry because uh, looks like that's what we need to do. Um, ah, boy. Okay. Let me try to look up in the internet. Okay, so um, if I mean you know Wikipedia, it has this hypertext. Well, hyperlink. So if I to search through it, I may find it. Okay, so um. Because we want to express this sigma, we want to get rid of sigma, okay? We want, to, we want it to be algebraic expression, so... Uh, boy. Uh. 
Yeah, this is gonna take a while, okay? So, uh, boy. <laughs> Okay, I'm looking at the formula of geometrics is how they derive that formula. Okay, so looks like possibly we can do something similar. All right. Um, okay. Well, we need some empty space, so, um... <coughs> Eventually, uh, this is what... The kind of thing that is our supposed goal. We arrived, uh, we derived this kind of our goal, um, to make it less than one. We kind of try to reverse engineer, okay? It's, uh... We did some cheating, okay, so, but eventually we want our formula to look like this, okay, our, the gigantic polyndrome uh, number formula, okay, we want it to look like this so that uh, it converges, alright, so, we know it converges, we just want to prove it, okay, so, that's why we did some cheating and so that <clears throat> how it might look like in the end, okay, so, well, I took a picture of this so I, I can erase this safely. Um, okay. So. <clears throat> uh, what's that? Uh, um, Alright, so. Let's say summation is equal to 1 times 2 to the 1st plus 2 times 2 to the 2nd plus 3 times 2 to the 3rd plus blah blah plus n times 2 to the n. Okay, so we want to find nice formula for this. Okay. And, uh, okay. Um, What if we multiply this by 2? Two? 2 times s is equal to 1 times 2 to the second plus um, 2 times 2 to the third plus what? 3 times 2 to the fourth plus blah blah plus n times 2 to the n plus 1, right? I guess that's how they do it in the to find the summation of geometric series. So, uh, I guess we can take similar approach here. Okay. And then we will subtract it. Okay, so. Okay. Subtract it. Minus S is equal to um, 
1 times 2 to the first, we we'll subtract like this, okay? No, diagonal way, okay? Plus 1 times 2 to the second, yeah, we are getting something. We reduced uh, this hybrid series, the geometric and arithmetic summation hybrid uh, problem. We reduced that into uh, just plain binary geometry series problem. Okay, so that's good. Dot, dot, dot. Because we do that, okay? Kind of. Plus what? One times two to the end, okay? Now we have minus this last guy. Minus n times two to the n plus one, okay? So yeah, we have it. Because, uh, so S, S is equal to this guy. What is that? Ah, what's the formula for geometrics? I, I'm sorry, I forgot. <laughs> That's easy. Well, there are n terms, okay, and uh, so it goes like r minus n, <clears throat> which is 2, and 2 to the n minus 1, 2, okay, multiply by 2, I think. Okay, uh, let's see. If, when r is 1, yeah, 2 minus 1, yeah. So so yeah, it, it is correct formula. So S, yeah, we pass the minus over plus n times two to the n plus one. Okay, that's how you do it. Okay, good, great. Okay. In general, okay, you have, um, because uh, in general, you have S is equal to uh, sigma, uh, we're not going to sigma, okay, so, because uh, sigma is handy dandy form formula notation, but we, don't want to, we need to get rid of sigmas, okay. You know, we need to express things algebraically so that we can, it's more understandable for us, okay? So, um, you have what, uh, 1 times 10 plus 2 times 10, okay? But in general, okay, it doesn't matter, some a to the first, 2 times a to the second, plus blah, 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 plus what? n times a to the n, okay? And what do you do? You multiply a, s, a to the s, then it becomes what? 1 times a to the second plus blah, 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 plus n times a to the n plus 1, right? Then you subtract it, okay? So then 1 minus a multiplied by s is equal to a first, a to the first plus a to the second plus blah blah plus a to the nth minus n times a to the n plus one. Okay, right? Easy enough, right? I, I learned this in Korean high school. Okay, it, it, this shouldn't be difficult. To you. We, we are subtracting these two uh, two equations. Okay, side by side. All right. 
and then here you have what sure one minus a a times one minus a to the n okay right so when let's see if it works Assuming A is not 1, okay. Uh, let's say A is equal to 10, okay. So, and A, A, yeah, then this guy, yeah, it works, okay. Yeah, it's just geometric formula, okay. Geometric summation formula, geometric series formula, okay. Minus A to the N plus 1, okay. Meaning, you got S, okay? What is S? 1 minus A squared A times 1 minus A to the nth minus 1 minus A downstairs and times A to N plus 1, okay? I, I'm sorry, it's it's not pretty, I know. But we got it. <laughs> okay. We got it. Alright, so uh for example, let's verify when uh A is equal to two and N is equal to one. Uh okay, this become one. This become one, okay. So two times what to just become minus two and oh. yeah 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 it works okay How about when uh, a is equal to 10 and a is equal to 10 and is equal to 2 let's see 9 squared over you have 10 and you have 1 minus uh, 100 minus uh, plus 9 okay uh, what is n 2 2 times uh, 2000 okay do you think this number will be get 210 it doesn't quite look like that right so let's see so we may have wrong formula, I don't know. Okay, this becomes what? 9 times 9, 81, right? Okay. And this is minus 99, minus 99 and 0. And um, what? 1, 8,000. Okay, and this number becomes uh, 10 0 7 1 divided by 81 Okay, if we divide this by 9, okay uh, Give me one second here. Um,
Okay. Yeah, yeah. Actually, this formula works. Okay. Yeah, it, it's a little bit surprising, isn't it? It doesn't quite look like this number, but if we actually uh, solve that, it works. Okay, so. Yeah, we, we have formula here. Good. We are, we are making good progress. Okay. Now, we, all we gotta do is just plug that in and get rid of those sigmas, okay? So that we find limits, okay? And, uh, yeah, I was gonna, oh, I don't wanna do this, you know, I wanna give up, but I just took a good nap. Now I'm kind of refreshed, so. I'll take a break, okay? Because uh, I think we may be getting there, okay? So, well, that's good. <coughs> okay. Let's take five. Okay. All right. <clears throat> yeah. Very good.
All right, we're back. Well, almost. I got some lip balm on my lip. I'm aging, so uh, my lips get very dry. So I always have this lip balm. Okay, so I guess we are getting very close um, finding formulas like this. Yeah, this formula I learned from high school, okay, so... Uh, <clears throat> okay, it's not a very difficult formula. I remember uh, learning this, okay. Public, Korean public high school, not the science high school. I learned some very good stuff in Korean science school too for two months, but I dropped out and transferred to regular <laughs> public, Korean public high school, okay? So, um, uh, okay. Let's, well, let's take a picture of this and we can erase everything except this formula, okay? Because this is just derivation and we don't need that. We just need the result. Okay. E. Okay, good enough. Ah, oh, boy. We came a long way. I mean, so how did it all start? The polyndrome constant, nicknamed as skateboarder's constant. It's not that I was inspired by skateboarders or my childhood episode about this stupid guy and me kind of, you know, he spreading bad rumors about me and no, I'm not, I wasn't inspired by that. What I was inspired by, though, is yeah, Champeron, what, uh, Champenoni's constant and also MRS constant. So I was wondering, yeah, we are kind of, you and me, we are kind of uh, amateur mathematicians, so I was wondering what other people are doing, other amateur mathematicians. And um, fortunately enough, um, Wikipedia has this list of amateur math mathematicians. Okay, so I was just looking at them one by one and Champagnoni constant, MRS constant. Okay, it was there. So, so many constants out there, mathematical constants. So, you know what? I want to discover one myself. Because if they could do it, so can I. Because I'm also amateur mathematician. So I want to discover a constant myself. That was the initial, initial that was the beginning of that. Okay, so. Yeah, Champagnoni constant is just 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And our polyndromic constant, it, it kind of it, it's similar to that, but it has some twist. It goes up and down, up and down. You know? But similar enough, you know. So that was the beginning of this polyndromic constant. Okay, and we're getting very close to prove prove its convergence. Okay, we know it converges. Because we started with the number itself. We didn't start with the series, like MRS, MRS constant did, right? It started with some series. Very beautiful repeating pattern, okay? By the way, we're going to do one more thing, okay? I mean, before we get back to our polyndromic constant, we will do one more thing, okay? Real quick. Uh, what? Square root of 3 
is equal to cubic root of 3 times cubic root of 3 times cubic root of something like that, right? And uh, what? Fourth root of 5 is what? Uh, pentic root of 5 multiplied by pentic root of 5, something like that. And uh, again, I learned something similar to this in uh, high school, Korean high school, public high school. I think it could have been science high school. Doesn't matter. But science high school, I was just only for two months. What would be this? You know, one plus one over one. Let's say x is equal to one plus one over one plus one over blah blah. This kind of infinite kind of number okay do you have any idea how to solve this i learned so i know how about i give you some time we can solve this all this problem in the same way it's recurring pattern right recurrence i don't want to just give it away okay why don't you think about this? Hmm? Can you see this? Yeah, you can. Try to solve what this number is. Uh, how, how to go about this, okay? <coughs> okay? Okay? Yeah. Probably we can generalize this because you have what? Square root of that, right? Yeah, we can probably generalize to n, okay, n's root of n times n's root of n. Here you have n minus 1, okay. Probably it's not too difficult to generalize like that and solve like that, okay, so. Again, we are amateur mathematicians, okay, so, yeah. We can discover things like many amateur mathematicians have, all right, so. All right, so, okay, we take a break and why don't you solve this, okay? Yeah, yeah it, it's not that hard, okay, so.
Okay, so um, this guy is known as Golden Ratio, by the way. <laughs> okay, the one of the most famous mathematical constant. Okay, it's used in what fine art and kind of like scientifically minded artists like what Leonardo da Vinci. Not was it? Was it Leonardo da Vinci? Uh, yeah, yeah. He, I think he kind of used this too. Golden ratio. Another way to express this guy is uh, square root of the same golden ratio, okay? 1 plus square root of 1 plus square root of 1 plus blah blah blah, blah okay? So they call this continued fraction and nested radicals. I just looked it up, okay? In the Wikipedia, so yeah. I mean, I guess one way to publish our result, which is con palindrome constant, is just put that in Wikipedia, but I'm not going to, okay? Because you feel free to go, go ahead and do that, okay? You have my permission, okay? Because uh, I, it's too much. I mean, what you, you got, I I don't want to use that lot text, the, you know, text by what? Professor Knus in Stanford, I think. Yeah. He, he, I think he programmed the first text, TEX. Nowadays they call it LaTeX, whatever. It's the computer program uh, software that can express this ma ma complex mathematical formula in a very nice, handy dandy manner. I don't know use that, okay? So it, it, it's gonna be too much work for me. So I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna publish it in Wikipedia or I'm not try to publish to mathematical journals or whatever, I'm not doing it. Okay. I I'll let you do it. Okay, if you want to. Okay. That's just too much work. I already did work here, so division of labor, delegation. Okay. Why should I do everything? Okay. Yeah, go ahead, publish it and be famous, okay. Just don't steal it, meaning cite, okay? Yeah, I got this from some, some other guy. That's all you need to say. You don't have to mention my name, okay? <laughs> it's easy, right? So, it's like this. It's so easy. I mean, it's, it's, I know it's very uh, intimidating, and I I, I probably I, I have came up with myself, but I learned it when I was in high school. 1 plus 1 over x, okay? So, because it's the repeating pattern, here, same square root of 1 plus, yeah, x. So it becomes x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0. Here, x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0. So yeah, they are both golden ratio, okay? Which is what? x is equal to what? Uh, 2 uh, b squared 1 plus minus, but we don't do, x should be a positive number, so we disregard that minus, okay, uh, five, she's like, one point six, blah, 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 okay, so, yeah, it's one of the most famous, um, one of the most famous, uh, historically, very, 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 one of the most famous mathematical constants. Okay, golden ratio. Ooh, it's getting hot, so. Gotta turn off the heater. It's very beautiful, okay? Ah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I did a geometry way to define this ratio, but, uh, Last time I thought I saw it something like what you have what uh I don't know you have a a well it should be you have a b so you have a plus b right something like uh a to b is equal to 
a plus b 2a something like that uh, so let me look it up again uh, I don't want to mess this up um, <laughs> I don't want to give you misinformation okay so golden ratio um, Okay. A plus B to A is A is to B. A plus B over A, A over B. Okay, yeah, yeah, so that's the ratio, golden ratio. Okay. that's X okay if this is a then what a is equal to uh, a is equal to what 1 plus square root of 5 and B is equal to 2 Okay, so what is A? 1 plus square root of 5, A plus B. 3 plus square root of 5, and is the same as um, A over B? Is this true? Well, let's see. 1 plus 5 plus 2 square root of 5, is it, is it equal to 6 plus 2 square root of 5? Yeah, 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 it is. Okay, okay. <coughs> okay, well, we got it. We made connection between algebra, geometry and, and algebra, so that's good enough. Okay. We're just having fun, okay? So let's take a nice picture of this guy. Just. It's a nice review. Okay. Okay, smile. Ah, okay. All right, um, I'm getting hungry. Oh, it's getting chilly too. I know it's so annoying. I just put my nightcap and uh, turn on the heater too. Okay. Uh. Okay. Now. Yeah, we'll do this, okay? Um, well, let's start from the number three guy, okay? Okay, so... Uh, number three guy, well... Let's say x is equal to what, cubic root of 3 cubic root of uh, 3 times cubic root of 3 times cubic root of 3 times blah blah blah, okay? Okay, then we have x is equal to cubic root of uh, 3 times x, okay? So, yeah, we just uh, cube both sides if you can x to the third minus 3x is equal to 0, right? So, and x is not 0, so we can divide by x. So, x squared is equal to 3. So, x is equal to 
Yeah, scale to top three. Okay. <coughs> How about this guy? Well, we we just take the same approach and um, okay. So we say x is equal to uh, what pentic or quintic root of five times uh, quintic root of five. So it goes like that, right? So then we have x to the fifth is equal to five times x. We divide by x because x is not zero. Then we have x to the fourth is equal to uh, five. So yeah, x is equal to um, what? Quartic root of five. And we can do generalize this. Very easy, right? Yeah, let's do it. X is equal to nth root of n times nth root of n times blah 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 blah. Okay, so is equal to nth root of n times x. Now we power both sides, so x to the fifth is equal to nx. So we divide by x. x to the n minus first is n. So x is equal to yeah n minus 1 uh, root n. That's that. Okay. I'm not sure if anybody discovered this. If not, well, good. If anybody discovered this, it's not very well known. Because I only saw this, I only saw this uh, two examples in the list of constants, okay? And I tried to find the generalized version and I haven't found it. So it could be first time in the world history or it could, I'll be surprised if it is the first time because this is very easy. So probably somebody has done this before. Okay, so we'll take a picture of this. Okay. Uh, to me, this is my publication, okay? Because I put this on YouTube, so. Other than that, I'm not gonna do anything more, okay? If you wanna put in the Wikipedia or academic journal, go ahead and do it, okay? But I'm not doing it. Because that's just too much work, okay? So. All right, I guess we, we are ready to get back to our, our ponder of our ugly darling baby. <laughs> palindrome constant okay i think we're getting very close to it close to proving its convergence um and i i've been erasing a lot so i'm not sure if we have that formula anymore um Okay, I guess we kind of do have formula. Uh, boy. Uh, I am putting the formula on uh, whiteboard like side by side. Oh boy, running out of space, man. So that I can take a peep at it. Ah, oh, boy. So many formulas, man. And, um... <coughs> I'll start drinking, too. Okay. So, um... If you don't mind... Ah... Uh, it's time to celebrate, don't you think? Um, by the way, yesterday I uh, watched this, uh... What this um, 
YouTube video clips of uh, David Carradine. You know, he was in what? Kill Bill movie. When he was old guy and before that, when he was young, he had this television show called Kung Fu in 1970s. Okay. I heard about it, but uh, yesterday was the very first time I actually watched some episodes of that TV show. And it was good. I liked it. Yeah. It was very philosophical, like kind of Eastern philosophy. Flashback, you know, when David Caravan, Caradin was in um, China, just Buddhist temple to learn martial arts and all that stuff. It was cool. I liked it. Okay. Yeah, very philosophical. Yeah, it was cool. And some action too, um, but very moralistic. And I, I like that theme. Okay. Kill Bill movie. I, I don't like Kill Bill movie because in the first installment of this Kill Bill movie, they killed this innocent Japanese woman. That's not okay. Even in a movie, you cannot kill a woman. Innocent woman. No. N not even in a movie or fiction, novel. You cannot kill a woman. Even if it's just fiction. It's not okay. Because th there's no point. It's ugly. Why do you kill an innocent woman? It's not funny. It's not... Also... Yeah, so I don't like the Kill Bill movie because of that part. Okay. Just I just threw it off the window just like that. Okay, it's, it's not acceptable. It's not forgivable to kill a woman like that, even in a movie. Okay, or that movie was Sin City. Yeah, again, why do you kill this beautiful, innocent woman, white woman, at the beginning of that movie? That's not acceptable. That's not forgivable. So I don't like that movie. Sin City. I toss it off the window. Okay, so it's not okay to kill a woman, even in a movie. Okay, so. Okay, so yeah, Kill Bill movie yeah, is all garbage. Okay, so Quentin, Quentin Tarantino and whatnot. Bullshit. Okay, so. But yeah, David Carradine is an interesting character. I mean, the way he died, he was what? Died in masturbation, or some kind of strange masturbation. So, masturbation, he died from masturbation ex accident. I mean, strange way to die. Uh, Maybe just maybe one day I will die that way. But I don't do anything strange like that. I just masturbate on the floor, okay? I'm sorry. Why am I talking about this? Maybe I shouldn't. How do I masturbate? I do really want to know. <laughs> Probably not, right? But it's fun fun for me to talk about it, okay? So yeah, just bear it with me. Or well, fast forward so you don't watch this. Yeah, I, I just, let's say this is my penis, okay? PG-13. Yeah, I just rub on the floor. That's how I do it. Just imagining beautiful lady. And nowadays, I don't watch porns, the internet adult films. I used to. Why? I don't know. I, I, I just don't need it. And it's too much work, so... It's easier for me to just imagine ladies and ladies who are not married, okay, single ladies. Yeah, it's just easier for me that way. So yeah, nowadays I don't even bother watching, looking for free internet adult movies because it does a lot of work, okay. So I guess I'm kind of too busy, okay. So how many times do I masturbate? Maybe twice, three times. A week, not a day, no. Anyways, so yeah, Quran. Yeah, I know people try to may try to kill me for saying this, but the way uh, we humanology, we humanologists interpret this Quranic verse, where yeah, cover up the women, okay, for their own protection. The way we are interpret this is this, okay, yeah, uh, there shouldn't be any prostitution or lap dancing or uh, adult film making, 
Why? Because it's demeaning to women. It lowers their social status and also it's bad for their health, STD, you know. So we should, for their protection, yeah, women shouldn't be making adult films or lap dancing, strip dancing, or prostitution. Uh, it, it should not be allowed, okay, because it's bad for them, okay. So we want to protect our women, right? So that's how we interpret that Quranic verse, okay. But in other settings, like, yeah, bikini, that's totally legit, okay. So. Okay, so all right. Yeah, well, that's that. But don't kill me, okay? Don't try to kill me. Don't. <laughs> no violence, all right. <coughs> well. Okay, we have formula right there, okay. Um. Okay. B O. Ah. I better start like far, far on the left because we're gonna need a lot of space. Okay, so <coughs> let's do the tripod walk so that um. Yeah, I panicked. Oh, shit. <laughs> Not again. <sighs> Better. So. Oh, so much workout, man. A lot of work. Workout to move this tripod oh okay so b okay b uh can you see this i know it's very thin right sorry <clears throat> bk plus first over bk okay burger burger prince burger king okay with sigma over there i times 10 to the i okay and this is like uh, I times sigma uh, A to the I. That's the formula for that. Okay, so sigma. And I goes from 1 to N. Okay? I is an index, so it, after we do work out the sigma, it disappears. The only thing that left is A and N. Okay? So that's that. We're gonna use this handy dandy formula to the guy over there, LKMK, if you remember from yesterday. Okay, so we have K as N and um, 10 as A. Okay, so all we gotta do is, yeah, plug that in. We have 10. 1 minus 10 to the kth over what? Minus 9 to squared, so what? 81. Okay. <coughs> minus, and uh, now plus, it becomes 9 downstairs. Ah. Uh, K times 10 to the K plus 
that's this, okay? That's the LK right there. Oh my goodness. This is such a mess. And plus, we have 100 times what? MK, right? Oh. Oh. Hundred times. Before I write that out, uh, My goodness, this, this MK, okay, MK. It's funky, okay. Ah, so we have to work this out first before we can use the, our handy dandy formula. Okay, this hybrid summation, hybrid series, the like arithmetic geometric series is hybrid of that, one product of that. So, hybrid summation whatever you we call it or name it we have to work this out first because it's not exactly this okay so uh this guy's equal to well 10 to the 2k that's what 100 to the k right and it's k is constant i is the variable sigma variable so can you read this kind of huh i try to write bigger okay yeah so 100 to the k 10 to the 2k okay yeah they can come out because k is a constant it's not sigma variable sigma variable is i okay Well, we put minus here, okay? Then you have minus i times 10 to the minus i, okay? So yeah, then we have that. <clears throat> or... Yeah, we don't need that. We don't need that. Yeah, no. Instead of 10 to the minus i, 1 over 10 to the i. Okay, so a is 1 over 10. Okay, so we got it. And i from 1 to k minus 1. Okay, so yeah. We. Now this form is com is uh, conforming this form, okay? It's obe obeying this form so that we can use this formula, okay? <coughs> okay. Okay, so we have 100K times 100, which is 100 to the K plus first, right? Can you read that? I'm sorry. 10 to the K plus first, 100 to the K, K plus first, okay? I'm reading that to you and it's easy. So that's why it should be okay, right? Um, I, I zoom that in for you if, if, if I don't forget to zoom it in, okay? Oh boy, I'm sorry to make it so difficult for you to see. Again, I'm reading it to you as I write, so it shouldn't be. I know I have English, this Konglish, Korean English accent, right? Nothing is easy, right? So yeah, then turn on the subtitle because this Google, YouTube, uh, they have this fantastic voice recognition, for, uh, uh, probably adaptive artificial intelligence, probably. Because I saw it and it recognized my voice, I, I mean, my accent and 
the closed caption, it was working very well. So you can understand my English. So that's adaptive algorithm, like artificial network, intelligence, neural network. Okay. Yeah, very, they're doing very good job there. So, okay. All right. So, we can now plug that in, right? So, uh, N is K minus one and A is 0 0.1. Okay, so one over 10. So one minus A is what? Uh, 0 0.9 and square that is 0 0.81, right? So you have 0 0.81 and A 0 0.1 over 1 minus 0 0.1 to the nth I, I, I'm just applying this formula, okay? minus 1 minus uh, well, 1 minus a which is what? 0 0.9 that goes downstairs and n is uh, k minus 1 and 0 multiply by 0 0.1 to the n plus 1 which is k okay that's that and we have to multiply by 10 to the minus 2k plus 1 okay that's in the original formula that for the burger Power prince, okay, be K plus first, okay. Uh, I'll take a picture of this, maybe it's time to take a break. I'm gonna zoom it in for you before I forget, okay. Because I want to keep my promise to you. Uh, I told you I would zoom it in, right? Okay, okay. right and all the at the back look at all those whiteboards oh okay so, because so that i can take a look you know yeah i have four whiteboards okay it's good that i purchased so many whiteboards because we need some space you know uh yeah i'm using all four whiteboards now because it's a big job big project <coughs> I'm not gonna write on the wall hell no man no just like I don't I'm not gonna tattoo myself no it's too permanent that's why we have whiteboard so that we can erase if I write on the wall I cannot erase that shit it too much work yeah paint over come on I'm not So no more tattoos, okay? Don't do tattoos. I'm gonna take a picture of this and we, we're gonna take a break, okay? So, oh, it's getting hot. Oh.
Okay. <clears throat> well, the morning birds are chirping. They're singing in this beautiful spring morning day on Sunday, some some date of uh, May 2019. I don't know what day what date it is today, and I don't care. Okay, it's Sunday. So I was thinking, yeah, I, I think there is God, Creator, and He's very much like us, because according to the Bible, what God made us. Adam and Eve after his own image, right? So, meaning, probably we feel the way God feels. Maybe God feels the way we feel because he made us after his own image. Maybe he, God even looked like us. Probably male. Because he created Adam first, right? <clears throat> Eve, well, he created with what? Adam's rib bone. But uh, he made Adam after his own image, so meaning uh, probably God is male, okay, if you believe in Bible, okay, and um, in this what uh, Michelangelo's the painting of Adam and Eve, Eve kind of looked like a man, she got a lot of muscle, <laughs> you know that. Garden of Eden, that painting by Michelangelo, right? Yeah, fantastic painter. Oh, it's so beautiful. But yeah, but Eve looked like a man. A lot of muscles, so not a very good painting of a woman, okay? Uh, kind of dikey, kind of muscular woman. Whatever, okay. So, uh, we're just taking a break from all this mathematics, okay? So, um, uh, but yeah, not everything in the nature is beautiful. Something horrible happens in nature, in nature, not human world. I mean, like, look at all these bad bugs, mosquitoes. We may want to extinguish those species. We may want to drive them to extinction. Okay, and we have some tools for that. Yeah, genetically modified organisms. Okay, there is there are ways to extinguish, exterminate those species once and for all. It, it is possible. We have technology to do that. Okay, so I think we should. Okay. So yeah, God created all those bad, bad viruses, bacteria, vermin, horrendous species, animal and plant species, like poison ivy or poison hemlock. God created those poisonous plants, evil plants and evil animals. We may want to extinguish them and get rid of those bad species from the earth okay we have tools to do that so <coughs> we may want that okay yeah okay i'm just giving you some ideas okay to make this world a better place so that you can go hiking and don't get any poison ivy and poison hemlock and shit okay so because they are killing people, okay? It's, I mean, poison ivy, uh, you get blisters. Oh, it's horrible. Ugh. I got some before, okay? Oh. Yeah. There's no problem getting rid of those plants, okay? Driving them to extinction. Actually, that's what we want. We want them to go extinct. Poison ivies, poison hemlocks. Bad bugs, what? Even flies. Okay, flies. All thorns are good, but f flies, we don't need flies. We don't need mosquitoes, okay? We can extinguish them, okay? Fruit flies, well, they are being used for what? Genetics research, so we can keep them, okay?
scarecrow flies, they're not too bad. Okay, but but mosquitoes, we don't need mosquitoes, okay? So Oh what what about birds and fish? Who feed on la mosquito larvae and Oh they can eat something else. Come hello <laughs> They can eat something else, okay? Uh yeah. No worries. They can eat some, some other insects, okay. Yeah. Or termites. Yeah, yeah we, we can get rid of termites, right? We can extinguish them. We can dri drive them to extinction, right? Because we don't need termites. Oh, well, maybe we do a little bit. Because termite has this digestive enzyme. They can break down wood. So that's a good source of research. So maybe we need termites. How about flies? Maybe we can research flies a little bit so that <coughs> uh, flies, um, because they are very resistant, maybe we can discover some kind of antibacterial, anti antibiotic medicine off of flies because they what eat shed but they never suffer from what indigestion or bacterial infection maybe you can research flies for antibiotics research because obviously they have some antibacterial mechanism you know their immune system is stronger than us probably because they don't get sick when they eat shit so they must must have some strong antibiot antibiotics yeah, it's a good. So yeah, okay, maybe we, sh we shouldn't um, extinguish them. But poison hemlock, poison ivy. I don't. Can you think of any use for them? What? Anti-poison hemlock poison. How about snakes? Ah, we. I think we need snakes. F first of all, they are beautiful, right? Snakes are very beautiful. How about gayism? Or... Sugar fetishism? Yeah, we can get rid of that. Yeah. Those ideologies? Yeah, we can kill it. Extinguish it. No problem. Tattoo piercism? Yeah, we can get rid of that. Whatever. How about bad bugs? Oh, we, we gotta get, yeah, we should extinguish bad bugs because uh, well, I have, to, I had bad bugs before, not in Alaska. In Alaska, yeah, there are bad bugs, but I didn't have bad bugs here. I've seen it in a restaurant because this restaurant manager is so nice, okay? He would allow homeless people would come in, so they, I saw bad bugs there, okay, so. You don't want to be too nice, okay? Because you don't want to get bad bugs from homeless people, do you? I don't. I had bad bugs in the Midwest when I was in law school, okay? Because I picked up this abandoned sofa, took it to my apartment, and it had some bad bug there. What an idiot I was, okay? So, so I was a poor graduate student in law school, so... What an idiot I was. So, I, I, yeah, but I, I moved out of there, so no more bad bugs, okay? So, I don't have any bad bugs in this house, okay? <coughs> so, and bad bugs, they have evolved so that they crawl on our skin and we don't feel a thing. Maybe we can research on that. The texture of this bad box on skin, it's shell. It's very smooth. If it bad bug crawls on my skin, I don't feel a thing. Maybe we can do some research on that. The how they have what's the mechanism? What's the texture of this bad box shell? Its legs, its skin. Okay, it's very smooth. So we, I don't feel a single thing when it crawls on my skin. How do they do, how do they do it? Okay, yeah, microscopic, microscopic analysis of this bad box skin. Yeah, we can learn something from that. Okay, so.
So yeah, yeah, Salomon said, King Salomon, yeah, learn from animals, learn from ants, how diligent they are. Yeah, we can learn from every single species of plants, animals, yeah, study. Okay? Biologically, microscopically, whatever, biochemically, every single species of plants and animals, then we will learn a lot. We will make a lot of technological advances. Yeah, birds, you know, owls. Owls. I've seen owls out in the wild in Alaska. Have you ever touched, felt the feather of an owl? It's super duper soft. Why? Because owls, they're predators, right? Predatory birds. And they fly, they hunt at night. Hunt for mice because mice are nocturnal too, right? Owls hunt them so they fly, they have evolved so that they can fly so silently. I've seen them at night in Alaska. You don't hear a single thing when owl flies. Okay, yeah, you can learn some good stuff from owls by studying. It's flight pattern, it's feathers, okay, so. Or sea creatures, whatever. Yeah, yeah, all so many different species on ours, right? We can learn from every single species from on the earth and we can learn a lot. Apply the technology, learn from animals, plants, and apply it to something else, okay? To make a brand new technology, okay? So, uh, I mean, airplane is just imitation of birds, right? We can generalize that, okay? We can imitate all different animals, how they live very long. Some animals live very long, right? Some turtles, some cranes, some rockfish, elephant, whatever. Okay, yeah, learn from those animals, biologically, physiologically, okay? Like giraffe, how can they grow so tall, okay? Their bone structure, okay? Yeah, learn from them. Better yet, farm them. Farm the giraffe, okay? Farm the elephant. So that we can sell them as perhaps pets. Oh, it's, but they're too big. Okay, genetical modification modified organism yeah use some genetic engineering so that they don't grow too big and still can reproduce like tiny little giraffe like of a dog size and they don't grow bigger than that and they can still reproduce have sex yeah brand new species of giraffe elephant bears that grow to the size of a dog or a cat. Yeah, teddy bear. Okay, yeah, we can make that happen. Okay, we have technologies. I'm just giving you some ideas, okay? <coughs> because I have many, many business ideas. I don't want to do it myself. I want you to do it, okay? So that you become rich, make company. But money is out there. It's being wasted on stupid companies like Tesla, <laughs> Elon Musk, dumb idiot, right? Driverless car like Uber. Yeah, money's being wasted on their stupid company stocks. Okay, so yeah, make some good company with that implements good ideas. And I'm just giving you many good ideas here so that you make those companies, gather some investors, and yeah, make it work. I don't want to do it. It's too much work, okay? I'm doing my part. I'm giving you ideas for free. Okay, so that you be rich, you create jobs, and be famous. Okay, I'm kind of trying to be an Abrahamic figure, oh, Bra Brahma, God of creation, kind of. Uh, well, I'm just a messenger. I'm, I'm no God. I'm no saint. But Abraham himself, he was what? Uh, he was underdog, but he gave birth to this Middle East. Jews and Arabs, 
so that's Abraham descendants Jews and Arabs all the Middle Easterners okay so they can they will came from Abraham okay so um but Abraham himself was kind of underdog unknown he was not a celebrity no he was not some national prophet or anything no just a guy underdog okay just a nice guy me i don't have to be a celebrity okay i'm, I'm happy as as i am do i want to be a celebrity yeah but if i don't become celebrity that's fine too i want to become celebrity i can be satisfied by that okay just like a good parent even though the parents are not successful themselves if their children become very successful they can live with that and die with that they are satisfied parents because they lo love their children okay so yeah that's how i see you you are like my metaphysical descendants brainchild kind of you be famous you go ahead become presidents governors congressmen senators ceos yeah you by all means do it okay and implement the ideas that i gave you okay and make it work save the world by all means be famous celebrity be rich powerful famous okay do it i try to be one like that but i it hasn't worked so far at least maybe after i live what 20 30 more years maybe i will become famous who knows right perhaps thanks to you i don't know it can happen also, okay we have taken enough break from mathematics okay so let's take a break we have taken metaphysical break by talking about random things we took break metaphysical break from mathematics now let's take physical break vocal break vocal rest so that okay so we'll be back we'll get back to this all right so.
So, uh, <clears throat> you know, this Mr. MRB, that's his name, fourth, middle, and last name. I suggest if he hasn't done so, I suggest he prove the convergence of his number. I'm not sure if he ever did. Maybe he did. Well, then that's good. But if he ha hasn't done so, I suggest that he prove the convergence of his number. Okay, so. Because I I know what he did. He I know for sure he did some what well, lab whatever this beautiful this convergence this vibrating convergence yeah it's very cool stuff with uh, what forced hundred summation whatever yeah he did that in Wikipedia nice diagram what GIF image kind of animation that's cool okay but how about some proof I, I'm not sure if he has done it yet if he has done it so already that's cool but if he, ha he hasn't done it he hasn't proved the convergence i saw that he does he do that one day okay so from veteran to veteran okay yeah i'm army vet he's well, ex-marine so veteran to veteran okay very cool discovery that he did okay yeah we appreciate that his service to the country and his contribution to mathematics that's fantastic yeah, let's appreciate some other amateur mathematician. Okay, so okay, we are done with the upstairs, but that's not all. We have downstairs too, but downstairs is a lot easier. Okay, we have downstairs, so that's the Burger Prince part. We we've done that, right? Burger Prince. Now we're gonna do Burger King, which is a lot easier, okay? So, all right, so we have uh, I times 10 to the I, so uh, actually, oh man, we have two more term, which is not sigma, okay? We have two, two more terms upstairs, the numerator, okay? And uh, we've kind of separated this two, these guys out because uh, we want upstairs sigma look like we we wanted to make upstairs sigma look like downstairs sigma. So we had to separate these guys out. Okay, so that's upstairs. Okay, and downstairs we have the same thing as this. Okay, so ten times ten over. 81 times 1 minus 10 to the k, okay? And we have the final sigma. Okay, it, it's also the same, okay? So hot now, but it's 100 to the... Uh, K, K, okay? Other than that, it's identical. Even to the dot, even to the like K minus one. Okay, so it's this guy. It's being repeated, okay? Well, Zero point one, zero point one. Okay, so eight point one. Okay, yeah, we divide by zero point one. So Okay, so that's that. <coughs> we have to prove that this guy. When k go to infinity, is this guy becomes some number that is less than one. We know it's positive, so between zero and one. That's the task at hand. 
Okay, at least we are making progress. We got rid of sigma. Okay, so that we can do this limit when k go to infinity. Okay. Yeah, ratio test of convergence. Okay, so. Uh, I'm going to take a picture of this and I will get rid of this because we, we don't need this anymore. We, we used it. Okay. In Buddhism, it, said, it says uh, Korean Buddhism at least. I don't know where it's Chinese Buddhism, Indian Buddhism. Because there have been so many Buddhist monks, Buddhist scholars, Buddhism scholars. I don't know whether, whether this particular teaching originated from Korea or China or India. It's India, Buddhism is India, China, Korea, and then Japan, okay? That direction, to the east, east world, propagation of Buddhism, okay? So, the Buddhist, Buddhist teaching says, uh, I'm guessing it's kind of modern teaching, or, may, or not, because it talks about letter, okay? Is letter something a ancient? Maybe. I mean, it's not a mechanical thing, it's just wood, nail, so I, I guess you can say nail, yeah, that's metal, so, uh, I mean, there's some wooden nail too, right, but ladder, so it is Buddhist teaching says, uh, once you use the ladder, you climb up using the ladder, right, you discard the ladder, and you move on. Okay, so just like I was a computer programmer, right? But once I, I kind of got promoted to a different job, making more money and better, perhaps better social status. Yeah, now I don't look back. I move on. Okay, but do I look back sometimes? Yeah, I, I, I do some computer programming right here, right? Pseudocode, whatever. Uh, yeah, my knowledge is there, but I'm not going to go back to computer programming as a programming job. No, I'm done with that. So like, uh, yeah, you graduate out of it. You grow out of it, right? You live your parents, just like in the Bible, book of Genesis said, yeah, a man leave his parents and meet a girl, marry her and have a family. That kind of stuff. We, we, want, we want to honor our parents, we want to be, visit them during the holidays, yeah, it's so cool. <laughs> okay, but uh, yeah, this e equation, we used it, we're done with it, so we're going to discard it, we're going to erase it, okay? because we got to move on, okay, so. Yeah, that, that the Buddhist letter concept. Yeah, you know. Don't ever look back, don't ever look back. What's that song? I forgot. Okay. Yeah, I took a picture also. <laughs> it's there. If I need that formula again. Because there's so many terms here. Maybe I made a mistake here, okay? Somewhere. Then I may have to refer back to that formula, perhaps. Because there are so many things here, probability-wise, it's easier to make one mistake somewhere because we have so many terms. It's like X-File episode about uh, space in season one. The, this uh, Colonel, I guess, he used to be in the Air Force. He became NASA astronaut, like many people in NASA. They used to be in the Air Force, pilot, they become spacemen in NASA. Yeah, so this Colonel guy, something like Ghost in the Space. I love that episode. It's one of my favorite episode, X-Files episode. It was season one, I think, when Dana Scully was really young. <laughs> She's such a pretty girl, red haired, beautiful. Yeah, so all these beautiful white people, okay, they are a gift to us, gift to humanity. So we should cherish them, white people, because they are unique, one of a kind, like red hair, blue eyes. No other race have that. So also blacks too, blacks, whites, we should cherish them.
treat them like God's gift to us, brown people. 80% of humanity, we are all brown, okay? So, like me, right? Browns. Arabs, Hispanics, Asians, we are all browns. Okay, so let's cherish blacks and whites because they're one of a kind, okay? So, we should protect and preserve their species. White species, black species. So, let them marry blacks, okay? Let whites marry whites preserve their black and white purity okay this is important okay so we have to preserve and protect the integrity the purity of whites and blacks let blacks be blacks whites be whites okay so don't mess with them okay so okay we brown should not mess with them okay so Because they're blacks and whites, they're very pure race. Okay, so very beautiful race. Okay, so yeah, this X file series. Okay, uh, all these rocket scientists. Okay, yeah, they say uh, well, there are thousands of parts in this rocket spaceship. So there are thousands of parts, millions probably, millions of parts in this rocket. So there's, there are million things that can go wrong. And there are millions of people who was working on this one rocket to make sure nothing goes wrong. Okay? It's very smart. Yeah, this Chris Carter guy, man. Genius, genius. The X-Files, I'm a huge fan of X-Files series. I have all the episodes, okay, for, with DVD, okay. So. Alright, so. Yeah, so, it's probability, okay, we have so many terms here, so. Now we have increased probability of an error. Okay. Because our equation is very long. Let's say probability of making an error in one mathematical term is 1%. And let's say we have uh, 10 terms, then the probability of making one error in a single equation with 10 terms become 10%. 1% plus 1% 10 times. <sighs> okay, so. As you live longer and longer, let's say you're 100 years old, the probability of you, some part of your body to go wrong when you're 100 years old as opposed to you are just one year old baby is like what 100 times more okay that's the mechanism of aging okay it's all about this entropy it's something i learned in school right? because i asked my professor a question <coughs> about aging of biological organism yeah it's about he said I guess he kind of know about physics. Yeah, it's about entropy taking over biological anti-aging mechanism. That was his answer. Okay, I like that answer. Okay, so yeah, so it's something I learned, and I'm taking it into for taking our next step in this theory of aging. Okay, learn and create, learn and teach, learn and create contribute okay so aging is nothing but this probability incident event probabil probabilistic event where you live for very long time okay yeah then the chance of error increases over time here we are dealing with space we have 10 different terms in this single equation. So there are more, place, more places to make an error. 
probabilistically speaking. Okay? Spatial wise, space, spatial wise, space wise, okay? Spatially, we have bigger space, so the assuming we have same rate of error, 1% chance probability of error per one mathematical term. We have 10 terms, then yeah, what's the probability of having one single error in this equation, long equation, long ass equation, big fat ass equation, okay? Yeah, it, it will be 10% as opposed to 1% when we only have one mathematical term, you know, it's very small equation, okay? Okay, so we can do temporally, okay, time-wise, that's aging, okay, so as you get older and older, yeah, probably it's speaking, yeah, something go wrong, right, in a year, yeah, bodies tend to accumulate those errors, DNA, whatever, body, function, yeah, that's aging, okay, it's all our probability of error, accumulating in time, okay. Here we are accumulating the error rate in space, error probability, okay? And that's why empire always fails. Because as uh, you know, Alexander or Cyrus, Hitler, Hitler is nothing but the last empire in the West. Because all this imperialism it's all about killing people. I mean, come on, Hitler, you think Hitler is bad. How about King Khan, Genghis Khan of Mongolia? Or Napoleon of France or Julius Caesar of what? Roman Empire, Cleopatra, Cyrus, or King Cyrus of uh, Emperor Cyrus of Persia. What? Alexander the Great of uh, Greek empire whatever king ramses or what the, what uh what's that ship's name in matrix um there was this famous king in egypt what's that ship's name in uh matrix uh it's named after this egyptian king Emperor, um, let me look it up. Matrix ship's name. This, this is why I love Bing. It has this beautiful picture. So cute. Yeah, it's a Bing. Okay. What's that thing? Is it a cursor? I don't have any cursor in my... Cell phone. What's the dot? Well, I don't see it anymore. So it was there. You saw it, right? It's a UFO. <laughs> so ghost in the machine, just like in the X file. Some artifact programming. Oh yeah, there it is again. Oh, I know what it is. It's this camera. This camera have this camera on my laptop. It has this. Light, that's what it is. It's a reflection of that. Yeah, being, I like being better than Google because it, sometimes it doesn't work as well as Google, okay? Google is the original, right? Kind of, uh, this very smart web searching. I mean, it's not the very first web, web browser. It was some enhancement from Yahoo, Netscape, Alta La Vista, this old school web search. But Google came up with a very smart algorithm. I don't know too much about it, okay, Google's algorithm, but it's published, okay. It was some Stanford PhD in computer science, couple of guys, okay. So they dropped out of PhD program and they made this Google company, San Francisco. They were in Stanford, you know, PhD guys. They use some matrix and many of that is, you know, some linear algebra there, but uh, many of that is 
pre-computation, okay, they compute they what web crawler. What is web crawler? Yeah, I programmed one too. Okay, I had this job interview. They asked me in Los Angeles when I was interviewing for this job. I didn't get that job, by the way. But yeah, yeah, program a web crawler, and I did. Okay, so it's not that difficult. Okay, if you are decent programmer, yeah, you can program web crawler. It's not too hard. Okay. Yeah, it's just, uh, you know, retrieve some website address, whatever, some randomly crawl this web space. Because it's, what, website, they have IP address, right? What, 256 dot blah, 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 dot, 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 whatever, web IP address. You can generate some web, web random number, it's a pseudo random number generator or whatever, okay? And you can construct this IP address and you go there, type it in and extract information in the web. Which websites they are public, right? Yeah, it's nothing illegal. Okay, web crawler. Yeah, they extract, they visit random websites, extract information, HTML. It's like click visiting some websites, which is public. Nothing illegal about that, okay? So that's kind of what Google does, okay? Uh, or Google like web search engines. They visit all the websites. It's pretty computation, okay? So they have huge disk space, okay? So they store information about other websites already. So that when you look up, so when you search for some certain term, they already have computed it before. Okay, so it's a pretty computation, okay, kind of thing. Which is very smart, okay? So, but not too smart. It's not like they are like geniuses. No. They're just a little bit smarter, okay? Not very smarter, just a little bit, okay? So. Yeah, that's why Google is so fast, okay? Because it, it's been computed already, it's been searched already. <laughs> what, you are looking for a butterfly? Why is it so fast, this search result in Google? Because they already searched it and they stored it already and they're just giving it to you what they have pre-searched okay so yeah, pretty computation yeah so that's why google is so fast because they have already searched this for you and stored it somewhere huge in a huge disk space so they're, they're trading exchanging converting between time and space it's not from me, I learned it in computer science. I'm out of breath, okay, I'm getting old. So we we'll take, a, take a break and I will tell you all about the conversion between time and space in computer science, okay. <sighs> I'm getting old, so. I'll take a break, I'll take a breath and I'll tell you trade-off between time and space in Computer science algorithm, okay? <sighs> okay. I talk too fast, I talk non stop, so I'm out of breath. I need some oxygen, okay? So.
So, uh, <clears throat> you know, let's continue to take this break, okay? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, well, we'll do this later, okay? So, <laughs> I'm a shenanigan, okay? I'm just lazy. It's Sunday, okay? So, let's. Let's do this later, maybe tomorrow, okay? <laughs> so, let's talk about gay marriage, okay? So, Time Magazine, oh yeah, what is good, what is evil? They say, oh, gay marriage is good. Oh yeah, US Supreme Court, yeah, in 2015, yeah, declaring gay marriage, that's a good thing. That's wrong, okay? So, they don't know what they're talking about. This Time Magazine, chief editors, what the fuck do they know? Idiots. Okay. Idiots with power. Uh. They was featured Hitler, Adolf Hitler, as the man of the year. And they acknowledged that in that ma Time Magazine issue in May 2019. Yeah, we didn't know Yeah, he, he is he, what he was capable of. So yeah, we featured that in the past Time Magazine back in 1930s or 40s. We featured it as a man of the year, Hitler, Adolf Hitler. Okay. Guess what? 60, 70 years later, they are making the exact same mistake with gay marriage. They don't know what gay marriage is capable of. What is it capable of? AIDS, misery. Gayism is the Hitler today. Okay. Um, it's destructive. Very destructive. Yeah, all gays, male gays, they have STDs because they are promiscuous. We males are promiscuous gender, so females are not promiscuous gender. So females, they have this inherent anti-STD, anti-promiscuity mechanism because females, they don't tolerate that shit, okay? I'm mean, unless the guy is very rich, okay? So President Trump, people like him, what do they do? They have sex, they marry this girl and they have sex with them. After she get old, they divorce. And they marry younger girl and have sex make more kids because they are rich so yeah child support yeah divorce settlement prenups yeah they can afford that shit so they keep marrying younger and younger girls when the, their ex-wife get old marry divorce marry have kids she gets old so divorce and marry again younger girls have kids divorce Marry another girl, have sex, have kids, divorce. Yeah, that's what rich people do, rich guys, like President Trump, right? Is it a bad thing? I think I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. It's kind of like temporarily polygamous, not spatially because he's marrying one woman at a time. So it's not spatial polygamous, but temporal polygamous, temporal polygamy, okay? Temporal promiscuity, okay. It's not too bad because, okay, so they divorce their wives, ex-wives, when she hits menopause. She's not going to have any more kids. She doesn't want to have sex. So, in a way, it's good because guys like me, ethnic guys like me, can date those post-menopausal ladies. And that's what I want. Yeah, white lady with postmenopausal. That's the only girls I date because I don't want to have kids. And as an ethnic man, I'm not supposed to date premenopausal white girls. So yeah, it's good for me. <laughs> okay, so it works. And also, yeah, he got enough money, President Trump. So. He got enough money so he can support his ex-wives and their children. Okay, so yeah, it's all cool. Okay, so. <laughs> ah, man. What else? Gay marriage. Okay, yeah, it's destructive. Okay, so. I went to this restaurant in Alaska and it was... They has this gay waiter, male gay waiter. And he would massage the, this rim mouthpiece with his bare hands he didn't have to because it was water cup so you don't it's not like you put some 
upside down, cup upside down and put some salt or sugar. It wasn't that. No, it was like beer cup, water glass. He was touching this intentionally. Why? He was possessed by this devil. He want to. Sp he probably has this STDs, probably a possibly AIDS or herpes, whatever. He want to spread that disease, STD. He's possessed by the devil, gay devil, gayism devil. Okay. So yeah, he want to spread his STD to his patrons, his clients, customers of this bar, right? This restaurant. I'm not making this up because I'm not that imaginative, okay? Yeah, I'm a novelist. I write novels. I used to. But I don't have that kind of imagination. It's from God. I saw it. I saw this gay waiter doing it. I'm not making this up. I'm not that creative. It's God, okay? So. Yeah, he, he wants to spread this STD that he has as a gay man. To this heterosexual patrons because he's jealous of this happiness that his co this customers of this restaurant enjoys but because he's not happy as a gay guy okay lesbian girls why are they so rude arrogant mean because they are unhappy because gay suck gay sex sucks ass gay sex is so Sucky. It's not fun. Gay people are very the, the unhappiest people because gay sex sucks ass. Okay, it's not fun. It's not real. It's just imitation sex. It's not real sex. No, real sex is man and woman sex, heterosexual sex. Homosex is just imitation sex, so that's why it's not fun. Okay, so yeah, lesbians they become very ugly people, ugly girls, gay guys, they get STDs. Okay, so gayism is today's Hitler. It's very destructive and dictatorial, ty tyrannic, <coughs> tyrannical, dictatorial thing. Gay gayism. Okay, it's today's Hitler. Time magazine is repeating its history, past mistakes, okay? Because they always go along with whatever is the most powerful and majoritarian mainstream thing. Yeah, they're making the same mistake here, today. They featured, they regarded gay marriage as something good. Like, ideology of the year, kind of. Just like they featured Hitler as uh, the hero the man of the year yeah they're making the same mistake today because oh, they always follow the mainstream majoritarian the most powerful thing i look at hitler he was an underdog once okay he is, is kind of a self-made man you know grew up in a single mother family very poor man at first but he overcame his poverty his underdog status and that's how he became hitler just like Abraham Lincoln, who was born in very poor family, okay? So Hitler, Abraham Lincoln, similar, self-made man, through their diligence and strong discipline. That's how they rose up through the ranks. They didn't have leg up, start like President Trump. He was born in a very rich family in Brooklyn, New York, New York, okay? so. President Obama, Barack Obama, President Obama, uh, Adolf Hitler, Abraham Lincoln, yeah, they were all born in very poor family, but they had strong discipline, work ethics, diligence. That's how they rose up through the ranks. Gayism, yeah, it was minority, politically prejudiced, politically unpopular ideology, gayism, tattoo piercism. Gayism, sugar fetishism, yeah, well, sugar fetishism is something else. We'll talk about that later. Okay, but gayism, okay, tattoo piercism, yeah, it used to be very underdog, this fringe element ideology, but they rose up through the ranks. Now they are on top. Sugar, I mean, 
Catopiarism and gayism, gay marriage, LGBT. It's kind of like Hitler, Abraham Lincoln, President Barack Obama, okay? They start from the very bottom and they rose up through the ranks. So Time Magazine, they give them tribute. They tri give them tribute. Once on the dog, yeah, rose through the ranks, okay? So they acknowledge that struggle, fight, diligence, investment, long time suffering, patience, okay? So I understand, okay, where you're coming from. But why Time Magazine have to had to uh, acknowledge this achievement of Adolf Hitler, President Obama, President Lincoln, gayism, tattoo piercism. I understand because they had long struggle, long patience, pain and suffering. So they achieved something. Yeah, the status, upward class mobility. They all achieved that. Yeah, that, so Time Magazine is acknowledging that, that suffering, pain and suffering, that achievement in terms of social class, upward mobility, okay? So, I know, okay? <sighs> okay, let's get back to computer science, okay? So, yeah, you have some algorithms, right? Space and time complexity big old notation okay so you can it's time and space they're very convertible things okay so if this algorithm takes very long time you can convert this algorithm so that it takes very little time but consumes a lot of space okay like sorting algorithm like bin bin sorting algorithm it takes a, it, this sorting algorithm may take a lot of space, but very little time, and that's a good algorithm because nowadays disk storage is so efficient and so cheap. Okay, so we would rather have an algorithm that take a lot of space but very little time, very fast algorithm, sorting algorithm. Okay. There's a space-time trade-off, space-time equivalence, space-time conversion in computer science. Okay? Something I learned in computer science. Bachelor's degree. Okay. Undergrad college. Okay, so... Yeah, they're comfortable. <laughs> <sighs> Because time is expensive. Both space and time, they are copium. Copium, something of value and quantity. That's what copium is. Okay, so. Yes, both space and time, they are valuable. And they are quantitative. So they are, they are, they are copium. Okay, so. <sighs> Why am I hyperventilating? It's getting too hot. It's May. We are marching toward noon, even if it's Alaska, it's getting too hot. Okay, so uh, I have this long, long pants. I'm, you know, <coughs> making a short pants because, oh, it's getting way too hot. <sighs> That's why I have, I'm half a went. Hyper ventilating? No. Hyper breathing, okay? Exhaling, inhaling. It's getting too hot. Oh. You know, these trousers, this sweatpants is not quite working, so we'll take a break. I'm gonna switch to this short pants. Oh, it's getting too hot. Okay, so we'll take over. Okay, so we'll be back. Yeah, I'm hyperventilating. Okay, oh, okay. switch to uh, short pants. Okay, so short sweaty pants. Oh, it's too hot.
Okay, we're back. Oh boy. Let's talk about dimension, okay? Um, so, dimension analysis in mathematics is like this. Start from zero, okay, of course. <laughs> Zero's dimension is a dot. It's like a play. It's a seed. Like dot. A seed, pumpkin seed, sunflower seed, whatever, or grain, bean, rice, barley, quinoa, okay? Seed. Zero's dimension. One dot. And plant is like zero's dimension because they're firmly rooted. They're not going anywhere, right? And they grow up, so it kind of, kind of become one dimension, okay? Like highway, you have this tree, and then it become what two dimension when it so this seed germinates. Ooh, I have this branch, two leaves become two dimension, and then it become three dimension. Okay, like circular this old branching pattern. Yeah, zero dimension become one dimension when it germinates, then two dimension. Okay, then three dimension. Okay, this evolution of a plant, higher dimension. Okay, so and uh, we have done this before, so we are revisiting. We are giving some new angle. Okay, biologically, whatever. Dimensionality, study of dimension. Okay, so um, time and space, because we're gonna talk about time and space. Okay, equivalence thereof. So, uh, yeah, I have this short pants, okay, so it's working far better now. So, and uh, I, don't my, I don't need my glasses, we're not, we're not gonna write down anything, okay, so we'll just talk, okay. Because we have done this before, okay. I did draw some, draw some diagrams for you in the past, so look it up, all right. I know it's not easy. All these episodes, they are numbered. Okay, they are not titled in English. They are numbered. By now, 350 something. Okay, so. Because uploading this video, three hour video, like 10 gigabyte each, it takes whole day, 24 hours, because I live in Alaska. Okay. Uh, so internet is kind of slow, but so there are about two months delay between this recording and publication. Okay, so But that's all I can do. Okay, so I kind of live as a hermit quasi hermit So I'm isolated so that I can do this. Okay. It's good that girls don't like me very much So that we, we do this instead. Okay, so Because sex is like smoking cigarette. It's, it's just this Smoke it just goes away, you know. <laughs> My mother's friends they told me this because they didn't want me to smoke cigarettes. So, <laughs> all smokes they just blow away in the wind. So why do it? <laughs> okay. So yeah, sex is like smoking cigarettes. Okay, it's just wasting time. It just goes away. But here we are leaving something behind. We are recording this. For the future generation, knowledge. Okay, so, so like uh, time and space dimension. Okay, so what this? I read this book by New York Times newspaper right journalist Chaos. Okay, back in the nineteen eighties, I think he wrote it in nineteen nineties. I don't know. So I read the Korean translation version of that. Okay, so. Uh, when I was in high school, it was very good science, science book, science history book. Okay, he was just art, what chronicling this recent development in science, chaos theory, whatever. He talked about uh, what's his name? I forgot. James. Uh, I don't know. Crick. Why? No, that's DNA guy, right? Watson and Crick. Yeah, I think it's James something, okay, whatever. Chaos, the book, okay. I highly recommend that to you, okay. I read it like twice, at least. It was so well written. He's a professional writer, journalist, so. 
that's what he does for a living. So yeah, he talked about this Benoit Mandelbrot, okay, who ran away from what Hungary or whatever, Eastern Europe something, to America because he didn't like this formalistic approach like Brubaki. He didn't like the formalism, so he ran away and then so he came to America and became professor in Harvard in mathematics. Okay, so uh, he worked with this Mr. Champagnoni. Yeah, this once amateur amateur mathematician, I think. Okay, so yeah, Ch Champagnoni, constant guy. Or some other guy, I don't know. Whatever, so yeah, he did what fractal geometry, okay, so he kind of generalized this concept of dimension. It doesn't, he's saying, it doesn't have to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 natural number. It could be 1.5 dimension, okay, so yeah, that was cool. It could be real number, you know, or yeah, 1.5 dimension or even square root 2, square root of 2 dimension. Something like that, okay, so That was cool, okay, so Yeah, but we are not gonna go there, okay, because I don't know too much about it, okay, so Zero's dimension dot Fourth dimension a straight line Two dimension a plane Three dimension a cube What's fourth dimension then? I give you like 10 seconds We, we did this before, so What's the fourth dimension? Yeah, this is the point where science and philosophy meets. Science and philosophy meet. Okay? I, I'm second language, English is my second language, so I'm not very good at this distinguishing plural and singular. Okay, so. Glasses. Where is my glasses? I should have said, where are my pair of glasses? We, in, in Korean language, we don't distinguish plural and singular very much, okay? So, it's kind of community based. It's not like a single person ownership. It's like Native Americans, right? It's communal ownership. We own this land all together. We, are, we don't, not individual ownership, but in a property law, you know. Native Americans, it's my like communal ownership. We own this land all together. You know? Korea is kind of like that, okay? So, uh, so singular, plural, we don't distinguish very much, okay? So, I gave you enough time, so. Fourth dimension, yeah, is space time, okay? So, Einsteinian, whatever. It's also a motion picture. It's a film. Okay? Because, I mean, it's kind of approximation of three dimension to two dimension. Because back in the days, and even today, you have what? A millimeter film, what? 35 millimeter film, okay? It's this picture, frame, what? 24 frame per second, whatever, right? 10 or 4p, yeah. A film, okay. Two dimensional picture, you have this holes because you run this on a wheel, right? You have a guy and he moved just a little bit, okay? Just a little bit. He's just raising his hand, okay? Woo! Okay? These holes are just this cog of the wheel. <laughs> Back in the days. Film, okay? It just rotates. You have the, what? Projector, light source, plug into some, what? AC, DC. <laughs> 
electrical outlet and it runs motor, okay, the electromagnetism, whatever. And you have light, also electro, electromagnetic, whatever, okay. So, yeah, it is on the screen, okay, silver screen. And these films back in the days and still nowadays, it use silver. That's why they call it silver screen, okay. So, silver dioxide, whatever, okay. So, it's something very expensive. But nowadays, we have digital film, okay. We, that doesn't use any silver. We just use silicone which is a lot we have a lot of silicone and sand okay so yeah digital is cheaper than analog okay so whatever so two-dimensional picture is approximation of three dimension right, we have hologram three-dimensional picture but let's say this is three dimension okay because we can see shadow okay when flat screen right television or computer screen we can still see three dimensions like back there front back up down left and right it's an approximation of three dimension on two two dimensional space flat tv screen computer screen cell phone it's two dimension okay but we are approximating we are capturing three dimension okay now, so we have three dimension. You can tell behind, front, left, right, up and down. That's three dimension. X, Y, Z. Three dimension. R to the third. Okay. Single dot, zero dimension. Line, one dimension. Two lines, X, Y, axis, two dimension. X, Y, Z. Left, right, up, down, front and back. Three dimension X Y Z. Okay, you can see that in this two dimensional screen. So this approximation. Okay, so so we have three dimension. Now fourth dimension is time, motion picture. Okay, we have forced, fourth, not forced, but fourth axis time. Okay, this motion picture. We stack up three dimensional picture one after another, one on top of each other. Okay. Three dimensional motion picture, okay, a film, this recording, or reality, the world, history. That's fourth dimension. What's the fifth dimension then? I give you like 10 seconds, or maybe 20, 30 seconds, okay. We talked about this before, okay? How much time do we have? 15 minutes. So we'll take a break because I'm out of breath. We'll take a break, okay? What's the fifth dimension, okay? I I'll let you know. Let you guess. Okay? Take five. Oh, boy. <sighs> I need some oxygen. It's good that I'm single because if I have family, a girlfriend, living girlfriend, I cannot do this. I'll be out choked, out of breath, too much. Good that I'm single. Good that I'm in Alaska.
Okay, we're back. Yeah, I, I guess I get my voice doing fine because I did some vocal training, you know, singing all those songs. So we may as well just continue after this three hours is up. So, so where are we? What dimension are we? I was kind of surprised. I was watching this Twilight Zone series, okay, when I first came to Alaska. I was so poor, I didn't have any job, so I went to the public library in Alaska and I rented this Twilight Zone series and um, Ross Stalling, you know. Yeah, kind of like Italian, kind of Middle Eastern, half Middle Eastern, half white guy, kind of <laughs> thick eyebrows and but very talented man, okay, so good storyteller, okay, so Twilight Zone series and he, one of his introduction in this, I'm not sure what season it was, maybe second or third. Yeah, he said there is this fifth dimension, the world of imagination, but to the summit of his knowledge, man's knowledge. I was like, oh my goodness, how did he get there? He didn't study mathematics. Well, he got it right. It's fifth dimension. World of imagination. That's what it is. Alternative universe. Just like Twilight Zone series. series. Okay. Maybe he was lucky. Okay. Maybe he got it out of fluke. Just some random coincidence. But, but he got it right. That's the fifth dimension. Alternative universe. So. Fourth dimension is the true universe, the one and only human history, the history of the universe. Three dimensional space stacked up together next to each other in time. That's fourth dimension. One and true history of the universe. Fifth dimension is you have multiple universes, our imaginations. Okay? Alternative universes. It does not exist. But it can exist in a movie, in a novel, in a book. Alternative course of history, human history. That's novel, fiction. Yeah, imaginations. That's fifth dimension. Okay, and Ross Tolling, he got it right. He didn't study mathematics, but somehow he got it right. Maybe by coincidence, whatever. Okay. Sixth dimension, seventh dimension, okay, maybe it's well imagination of sixth dimension, maybe it is imagination of all people. Okay. Yeah, so we have fifth dimension, that's imagination of me, one person. All to, because I can imagine all different kinds of alternative universes as a human being or as a writer. Oh, as a screenwriter, as a filmmaker, okay, storyteller, I can imagine multiple different alternative universes. That's fifth dimension, just one person's imagination. Now, sixth dimension is everybody's imagination of alternative universes. So I have my set of alternative universes. You, maybe you're a writer too, okay, or imaginer, okay. Yeah, maybe you're a writer, novelist, filmmaker, screenwriter, whatever. You have your own set of alternative universes. I have mine. So oh, every single human being have their own set of alternative universes. That's the sixth dimension. Seventh dimension is what? God's imagination. Because I imagine many alternative universes. You imagine alternative universes but it's all created by god because in humanology we are very re reductionists we are very determinists we are very deterministic every every single thing that i or you or anybody else ever imagined it's determined by men upstairs <laughs> So now, 
God created this world, this universe, and he wrote down, predetermined that what I'm going to imagine today or tomorrow. All the alternative universes, novels, fictions that I write or imagine, think about, it's all predetermined by God. Okay? And he did that for you, me, and everybody else's. There's no freedom. No, it's all predetermined. Okay. So. But God himself imagines too. Okay? So he have multiple version of everybody's all people's imagination the sets of alternative universes. So God imagines himself. Okay, so that's the seventh dimension. God's imagination of all people's imaginations. That's seventh dimension. Okay. Is it too difficult to understand? Well, it's not. <laughs> we are just stacking up four dot 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 becomes a line. Line, line, line becomes a plane. Plane, plane, plane becomes a sandwich. A slice of cheese, slice of ham, two slices of bread, one slice of lettuce, one slice of tomato, one slice of onion, two dimensional things, stack them together, it becomes a hamburger or sandwich. Three dimensional cube, okay? And I have this hamburger sandwich and mm. it, well, yeah, so three dimension this motion picture. Okay. <laughs> like robot dance, right? Yeah, robot dance. Yeah, it's a motion picture, right? Yeah, it becomes fourth dimension, right? And you stack up fourth dimension together, it becomes uh, universe one, universe two, universe history one, history two, history three. That's the fifth dimension. My imagination of alternative universes, fictions. I write main novels. Novel one, novel two, novel three. History one, history two, history three, okay? History zero, reality. The true one and only history of the universe, okay? <sighs> then everybody, I mean, I'm not the only writer there is. Other writers out there, okay, they write their own novels. Novel 1, novel 2, novel 3, okay? So that's the sixth dimension. Seventh dimension, it's God's imagination. He just picked one of his imaginary story. That's his story, history. But there could have been something else. So God imagined, hypothesized, and he just picked, happened to pick one universe history. Okay? But God, presumably, he imagined some other alternative history. So that's the seventh dimension. Okay? So, lucky seven, number seven, Jesus' favorite number, whatever. <sighs> We talked about number seven before, okay. Seven, heaven, okay, whatever. Yeah, it, it goes like this, like uh, what? Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, si, do. Yeah, do, to, si, seven, right? And the five black key, keys, so it's twelve, but whatever. Or, in Korean rainbow, it's like, pal, Palju no cho pa nam bo. Seven. Like red, orange, green. Palju. No, okay. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, navy blue, and purple. Okay? It's seven colors. Okay, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, si. Yeah, seven major keys. And also seven, okay. Yeah, two dimensional thing. You have circle, 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 okay. So, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so yeah, seven is also what prime number is. Yeah, whatever. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a special number. Okay, so seventh dimension. I think that's as high as it gets. Okay, uh, unless you posit that there are multiple gods, <laughs> then yeah, you have eight, ninth, whatever. Okay. But if you believe in monotheism, one god, then yeah, seven is as high as it gets in terms of dimension. Okay, so. How much time do we have? One minute left. We'll take a break, okay? Uh, all right.